Welcome to the Statistic NED YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about when and why to create your own R package. So this is supposed to be the starting point of a video series. I'm not talking about how to do it. This will be the topic of upcoming videos. But today it's about the motivation and in which situations um, does it make sense to create your own R package. When should you think about creating your own R package? So. There are a couple of reasons actually. Maybe you know the quote from the R for Data Science book by Hedley Wickham and Garrett Grolemont. Very much recommended. You can read it online for free. They have a quote there. If you find yourself copying the same piece of code twice so that you now have three copies of this code, then it's time to write a function. So we can take this idea and extend it to R packages. So let's say you have started writing your own functions and now you find yourself reusing the same functions between different projects and copying these functions between different files. Then it's time to think about your own R package. So um, to keep it more short, if you want to reuse code easily, then an R package is a great way of doing that. And yeah, as I said, spending if you spend time copying and pasting functions across files, it's a better idea to keep these functions in an R package. An R package gives you a way to organize your code in a central place. Of course, you can use version control as well, but an R package is a very elegant and convenient way of doing that. Also, an R package can improve your collaboration with others in ongoing projects. Of course, an R package is not the only way of doing that. Version control, again, as I mentioned, um, yeah, but an R package can help greatly in collaboration with others. Another aspect is also standardizing your code. For example, I gave a training in a larger company and they had a design department there that said that all charts and visualizations that are created in-house and that um, are published must adhere to a specific color scheme. So a team created an R package to easily allow all R users in the company to access this color scheme without reinventing the wheel, the wheel for every visualization again. So standardizing your code can be achieved by using your own R package. Also documentation is a huge topic. Um, you can make use of R's built-in infrastructure. If you've used R for a while, I'm sure you've used R's help files for a number of functions. So this is a very um, structured way of documenting functions and you can make use of this infrastructure for your own packages um, to have documentation which is much more convenient than uh, reading through R scripts and checking if there are any comments that help you understand what the functions actually do. And then another aspect that is sometimes overlooked, you can also include data in your package. For example, let's say you have written a fancy calculation method and this method needs a specific data format to help you show how to use it. Um, you can include data in your package and then others uh, will find it much easier to um, work out how your function actually works and see real life examples. So these ideas are taken from a tweet by Katie Hudon. So you can check that out. I expanded it a little bit, um, but not all the ideas were mine in the first place, of course. Right, so this is a little bit about the motivation. Um, now, which preconditions do you have to fulfill to create your own R package? You might, you might think this is for nerds or for more advanced programmers. So I have a quote here by Sébastien Rochette, who's a colleague of Colin Fay at ThinkR in France. Great company that is doing a lot of valuable stuff for the R community. For example, they created a package Golem to um, publish your Shiny apps and create Shiny apps as a package. Um, so um, that's good work by this ThinkR team. And the quote goes like this, you can create an R package if you have written at least one line of code in your career so far. This may sound a little bit exaggerated, but I think it gets the idea across. You don't need to be a very advanced R programmer to think about creating your, R, your own R package. And in upcoming videos, we'll see how easy it actually can be. Right, so this is meant as an encouragement. And to finish off, let's just compare a little bit uh, what it means to have functions in an R package compared to using functions in your global environment outside a package. So 
This is the latter case, um, functions outside a package. So you see on the screenshot, the functions clutter my global environment. I was not very creative here in naming my functions. It's a German naming scheme now, but it just goes from my function 1 to my function 10. You see they're sorted alphabetically in the global environment, which doesn't make too much sense here because function 10 is sorted between function 1 and function 2. Um, to use these functions, every time you restart R in R Studio, you need to execute a script to define these functions and to make them available. And the question again about documentation, if you want to find out how to use these functions or what parameters are supposed to mean, um, you'd have to check the R script and maybe look for comments there or try to understand the code. So this can be confusing for colleagues and also a very important person that you write for is future you. So um, using the built-in documentation infrastructure is much more convenient to explain what your function does. So here's the second case, functions that live in an R package. I use the 4cats package as an example here. Um, so now to make the functions available, I don't have to run any script. I just type library and the name of the package, 4cats in this case. So this is much easier. And then the functions don't clutter the global environment. They don't live in the global env environment, but in the package namespace. So um, your global environment is not as filled or cluttered as it is without using an R package. There's one central place to manage your functions and keep them up to date, and this is the current package version. So if you have an in-house repository in your company, for example, everyone who wants to have access to the latest version just installs the latest version of the package, and you don't need to worry which project contains the latest version of any functions. Of course, again, it's recommended to combine package development with version control. Git, I think, is most popular, but you can also use SVN subversion. And again, I already mentioned the documentation. You can make use of the structured help files. You can make use of context menus. You see that on the top left in the screenshot. Um, a lot of functions in 4 start with FCT underscore to manipulate factor levels. So you can make use of that and obtain an RStudio context menu. I just typed question mark FCT underscore and then all the functions that start with this prefix are listed. So you can do that in your own R packages as well. Um, you can provide application examples in your help files. And as I mentioned before, you can include data in your package and document this data, describe what the variables mean. And you can also include so-called vignettes. You see that in the screenshot on the bottom left. It's an example again from the 4 package. So a vignette is like a general form of documentation that introduces your package without immediately diving into the specifics of a certain function. So you can explain to colleagues like what was the package created for, which kinds of problems does it solve, and then um, colleagues or other people who want to use your package get an idea if this is helpful for them before they dive into the specific help pages of certain functions. Right, that was it. Um, I hope this gave you some motivation to start your own R package and in an upcoming video I'll show you how easy it is and then we'll also look into how to document functions and so on. Um, it's really not that hard to do. I hope you feel encouraged to do that. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. All the best for your own data analysis for your projects and also then for creating your packages. See you next time. Ciao.